Sup, chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, when it comes to stopping the slaphead curse, most of us don't really need that much motivation. I mean, who the hell wants to spend the rest of their life having a ring of hair around their heads in the shape of a toilet seat? It's definitely not a flattering look, and despite what all the bald copers out there tell you, the fact is, is that there is objective data which confirms that being bald is a cosmetic defect that will have a tremendously negative impact on every aspect of your social life, from your romantic life all the way to your professional life. People treat you better when you look better, and your face is the first impression you give people, and having a full head of hair is a necessary aesthetic component to frame a healthy and handsome face. Anyways, I didn't create this video to revisit this topic as I already did a video where I demonstrate irrefutable evidence that going bald will worsen the quality of one's social life, and I'll link that video below if you haven't seen it yet. Truth is though, is that the negative outcomes of hair loss go far beyond just your social life. In fact, there is extremely strong evidence that going bald will also hurt your physical health and shorten your life. So even if you are part of the Jashivic Bro community and you've managed to cope with your newfound identity as a bald and bearded clone, the fact is that baldness is still hurting you at the cellular level and helping speed up your impending demise. Sound like hyperbole? Well, I thought so too, but bear with me for a moment here and let me share with you the overwhelming evidence that baldness is not just something that destroys your looks, it's also something that can outright kill you. So, if you guys remember my last video on Twist 1, which I'll link below, I showed that there are at least 12 gene locations associated with androgenic alopecia. One of these gene locations involves the androgen receptor, which we know is the key to androgenic alopecia, but the other location involves other major metabolic pathways in the body, like the WNT Wnt pathway, and the twist protein, as well as the other gene sites that are all pretty mysterious. So, based on all the genes involved in the causation of androgenic alopecia, it would be surprising if androgenic alopecia didn't have any other effect in the body. Unfortunately, it does have other effects, and all of these effects are bad. Not only that, the evidence that androgenic alopecia is associated with other diseases isn't just some weak anecdotal data, it's actually very strong information. There are numerous studies showing this, so I just selected some of these studies that are the strongest of them all, as well as the most recent and relevant, and I'm going to go over all these studies with you today, Jooms. So to start things off, androgenic alopecia is associated with heart disease, as well as with risk factors associated with heart disease. That's a huge deal, because heart disease is the biggest killer of the human organism on the planet. The majority of people watching this video, in fact, will one day die of heart disease. That's how common it is. In this article titled, quote, Alopecia and its association with coronary heart disease and cardiovascular risk factors, a meta-analysis, unquote, the authors did a meta-analysis of studies looking at alopecia and heart disease. So if you're new to my channel, you may be asking what a meta-analysis is and why you should care about it. Well, it's when you take a lot of studies and combine the results to get a result that is more powerful because it's based on more data. So typically, this is considered one of the strongest forms of scientific evidence. In this meta-analysis, the authors took 31 separate studies on androgenic alopecia and heart disease and combined them to get a total of 50,956 subjects. So when I say this data is strong, I'm not kidding here. That number of subjects is higher than the population of Monaco. Out of these 50,956 subjects, there were 29,254 with alopecia and the rest rest were in the control group. In this analysis, the investigators looked at alopecia in general without looking specifically at androgenic alopecia. But since androgenic alopecia is the most common cause of alopecia, we can assume the majority of people in this study had androgenic alopecia, so therefore this study definitely applies to people with androgenic alopecia. So let's first look at coronary heart disease, which the investigators defined as anyone having myocardial infarctions, meaning a heart attack, angina pectoris, meaning chest pain, is ischemic heart disease and coronary revascularization, meaning having had a coronary angioplasty or heart bypass surgery. So this is pretty damn serious stuff. Anyways, being bald increased the risk of coronary heart disease by 22%. If you look at this figure here, on the left-hand side, you see the statistics of the risk of coronary heart disease, and on the right-hand side, you see a diagram showing the risk plotted on a graph. In this kind of graph, anything to the left of the vertical line labeled with the numeral 1 means lower risk, and anything to the right is an increased risk. The blue diamonds show the averages of the studies. So you can see that having alopecia increased the risk of 
any coronary artery disease and seemed to increase the risk of moderate and severe heart disease more than mild disease. So definitely not good news here, chums. To add to the bad news, being bald increased the incidence of risk factors for heart disease, including diabetes and other types of metabolic syndrome. Diabetes is responsible for 11% of all deaths globally, and it is also a risk factor for heart disease, which is the biggest killer on the planet. So this is a huge deal. Furthermore, the investigators found that baldness increased the risk of having high blood pressure, which is another risk factor for heart disease. Some of the specific findings which show how baldness contributes to various diseases included finding that the risk of high blood insulin was increased by a whopping 97%. The risk of insulin resistance, which is what happens in diabetes, was increased by 488%, as you can see in this figure here, which is similar in design to the last figure I showed you. The risk of metabolic syndrome increased by 449% as well. Having alopecia also increased the risk of having abnormal blood lipids, causing an increase in LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, as well as a decrease in levels of HDL, which is the good cholesterol. Alopecia also was associated with increased triglyceride levels, which are the fats in the blood. Blood pressure was also higher, with systolic blood pressure being increased by 73%, and diastolic blood pressure increased by 59%. Keep in mind, with heart disease, especially when we're dealing with people who are at high risk, even minor fluctuations in blood pressure can be lethal. And these are not minor fluctuations we're talking about here. These are huge shifts in blood pressure. If I had read this meta-analysis and not known it was talking about alopecia, I would think the researchers were investigating smoking or Nikocado Avocado's diet. Also, keep in mind that these abnormalities are not only risk factors for heart disease, but are also risk factors for stroke and peripheral vascular disease, all of which are due to atherosclerosis, which these risk factors aggravate. So, this is not just my interpretation here, Chooms. In analyzing this data, the authors note that heart disease is more common in men than it is in women. So both heart disease and androgenic alopecia are made worse by androgens. Since men with androgenic alopecia usually have similar serum androgen levels to men who aren't bald, the cause of the increased risk for both conditions is probably genetic abnormalities of the androgen receptor and how androgens are metabolized in the cells. We know that people with androgenic alopecia have abnormal genes that involve the androgen receptor, and it may be that these same genes are involved with the causes of heart disease, though this is all still being investigated. Anyways, both diseases are clearly inherited conditions because they both run in families, therefore both are due to genetics. Unfortunately, the association of baldness with diseases doesn't end there. You probably know that both finasteride and dutasteride were first developed not to treat hair loss, but instead to treat BPH, which is benign prostatic hyperplasia, which means an enlarged prostate. BPH makes it very difficult to pee, and it is very common in men, especially as they get older. Androgenic alopecia and BPH are both related to the trash hormone DHT, and both conditions respond well to the inhibition of the 5-AR enzyme, which lowers DHT locally in the hair follicles as well as in the prostate. So... If you have androgenic alopecia, the question is, are you also more likely to develop BPH? Well, it seems that the answer to this is yes. In this study from Egypt, 300 men with androgenic alopecia were matched with 100 control men without androgenic alopecia. I should mention that none of the men in any of these studies were on 5-AR blockers, because actually 5-AR blockers like finasteride can reduce some of these risks, but we'll get into that later. Anyways, all these men had prostate exams and tests of urinary flow, as well as blood tests. Not only did the investigators look at the incidence of BPH in the two groups, but they also looked at the incidence of metabolic syndrome. We mentioned metabolic syndrome earlier, but in this study, it was defined specifically as having any three of the following criteria. A waist circumference of more than 102 centimeters, which is 40 inches, triglyceride levels over 150 milligrams per deciliter, HDL cholesterol less than 40 milligrams per deciliter, blood pressure at 130 over 85, or finally, a blood glucose level over 110 milligrams per deciliter. So, metabolic syndrome is sort of a combination of obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, and abnormal blood lipids, so it's similar to the cardiac risk factors like insulin resistance that was found in the previous study. Anyway, the result of the study showed that BPH was seen in 36% of men with androgenic alopecia versus 6.8% of men with normal hair, so that's a pretty huge difference. Metabolic syndrome was seen in 51% of men with androgenic alopecia versus 28% of men without 
without androgenic alopecia. Again, a substantial difference. So these are very strong associations, though again, it's not clear why they're associated other than the fact that BPH and androgenic alopecia both involve androgen receptors. So it's likely that the genetic defects causing one problem may cause the other problem. What's even worse than prostatic hyperplasia, though, is prostatic cancer. And I'm sorry to say this, Trooms, but androgenic alopecia has been associated with this too. This study from Australia looks specifically at prostate cancer. It is titled, quote, Early Onset Baldness and the Risk of Aggressive Prostate Cancer, Findings from a Case Control Study, unquote. Anyways, it looked specifically at this association, as I said, and in this study, 1,107 men with androgenic alopecia were compared to 834 men without it. The investigators looked at the risk of aggressive prostate cancer, meaning the worst type of prostate cancer in these two groups. The researchers found that men who started going bald around the age of 20, that the risk of aggressive prostate cancer was increased by 51% over the risk in non-balding men. These men with early onset androgenic alopecia also tended to develop prostate cancer earlier than the men who went bald later or who never went bald. This is shown in this graph here. In this graph I'm showing you, the curve showing the age of diagnosis is shifted to the left in men with early onset androgenic alopecia. The good news is that in the case of men who were bald by the age of 40, but who had not started balding at the age of 20, these men had no increased risk of prostate cancer compared to men who never went bald. Although, let's be honest here, most of us going bald do start early and have signs of androgenic alopecia in our 20s and sometimes even in our teens. So going bald at 40 is the rare circumstance. The research yet again suggests that there is a genetic susceptibility to aggressive prostate cancer that is present in men with aggressive androgenic alopecia although the genetics have not been fully worked out yet. Unfortunately, the bad news for bald people keeps on getting worse. More and more association between androgenic alopecia and diseases are being found on a regular basis. One tool to find these associations is the use of huge genome projects like 23andMe. In this study titled, quote, Six Novel Susceptibility Loci for Early Onset Androgenetic Alopecia and Their Unexpected Association with Common Diseases, unquote. The investigators used use genetic databases to identify abnormal genes associated with androgenic alopecia. The biggest source of data came from 23andMe. The strongest association between gene location and androgenic alopecia is at the chromosome location 20p11. This is associated with the gene FOXA2, which interacts with the androgen receptor to regulate gene expression. The androgen receptor gene located on the X chromosome is also seen to be abnormal in many cases of androgenic alopecia. But remember, we men get our X chromosomes from our mothers, so we know that there are more genes involved because men can also inherit baldness from their fathers, and we talked about this in my last video, which again is linked below. Anyways, six of the gene locations associated with androgenic alopecia discussed in the article, one of them is located at 17q21.31. At this location, there is a gene called MAPT, or microtubule associated protein tau, and this gene encodes for what's called the tau protein protein, which is essential to a type of microtubule that, guess what, is found in hair follicles. But this gene location also has been found to be associated with Parkinson's disease, which is a terrible movement disorder that is unfortunately very common. It occurs in 1% of men over 60 years old. It's what ended the career of actor Michael J. Fox, who is most famous for a starring role in the movie Mars Attacks. Parkinson's disease is more common in men than women as well, so it's suspicious that the androgen receptor may be involved in Parkinson's disease as well as androgenic alopecia. Well, no one had ever before noticed an association between androgenic alopecia and Parkinson's disease, so the investigators looked at the 23andMe database, and to everyone's surprise, it was found that having androgenic alopecia increased the risk of Parkinson's disease by 28%. So it looks like the slaphead curse doesn't just hurt your cardiovascular and endocrine system, it also hurts your neurological system, and we're not talking about some fake made-up effect of 5AR blockers like causing depression or brain fog. We're talking about an incurable, debilitating disease. So, you can see that androgenic alopecia is not an isolated disease. It is a disease that comes with a lot of baggage. It is associated with heart disease, diabetes, high cholesterol, obesity, high blood pressure, benign prostatic hyperplasia, prostate cancer, and even Parkinson's disease. 
Wow! When you see all of this, it's clear that these are all diseases that are genetically predetermined, and all this genetic research, which is really getting to the bottom of androgenic alopecia, really makes things like the blood flow theory seem amateurish, simplistic, naive, and just outright stupid. So, this all sounds really, really terrible, of course, but there is some good news, fortunately. There is strong evidence that treating androgenic alopecia with finasteride actually can reverse some of these risks. We know this because even though you can't change your genetics, we do know that all the diseases we're talking about are activated through the presence of androgens, and we know that we can reduce the impact of androgens by suppressing the trash hormone DHT. So, even if we still have the genetics for androgenic alopecia, we can reduce the risk of androgenic alopecia associated diseases by suppressing DHT. So using finasteride doesn't just stop hair loss, it can reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, the risk of prostate cancer, the risk of BPH, and the risk of Parkinson's disease. I have talked about how finasteride can reduce the risk of all these diseases in previous videos that I'll link below, so it is reassuring to know at least that even though we can't control our genes, we can control the trash hormone DHT. DHT, which activates the bad effects these genes cause. So don't despair, Chooms. If you are on finasteride, then you are being protected from all these terrible things, and you can take finasteride with the assurance that you are not just saving your hair, but you are also prolonging your life. And that's, of course, a wonderful thing, because a full head of hair is something that should be enjoyed by you and by your loved ones for a very long time. So with that, thanks for watching, Hair Loss Witchers. Keep fighting the good fight, and I'll see you next time. God bless.